Hey guys, even here and in today's video, we're gonna talk about something really interesting. We're gonna talk about Quinton Raya and what exactly happened to him this year at the New York Pro. So a couple of years ago, two years ago to be precise, 2022 Tampa Pro, Quinton showed up and he held his own against some top bodybuilders. So the only guys who beat him were the 212 Mr. Olympia champion Kamal Algarni and a top 6 Olympian Akim Williams. Quinton at the time was I believe 25 or 26 years old only. Yeah, crazy. It was crazy. So everybody was saying that he is the future of the sport, that he is the next Flex Wheeler, that he is the next Ronnie Coleman, that he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia, and rightly so, that, that was just reasonable, I mean, looking like this, at 25, 26, and placing third at this show, he promised, he promised a lot, so obviously, everybody had huge expectations from him this year, because he took two years off, and in his offseason, he worked with Matt Jensen, let's say, top three best coach in the world, probably, and he progressed, he made so much progress, he was freaking humongous this offseason. And the conditioning wasn't that bad in the offseason, he didn't let go, like, he still had a freaking 8-pack, you know? He had visible abs, he had striations in his uh, quads, he was just, you know, a little bit watery, but he wasn't fat or anything like that. It looked like he gained, I don't know, like 30 pounds of sheer muscle, and he was well beyond 300 pounds in the offseason, I believe he was like 330, 340, so he was freaking heavy and massive, seriously massive. So nobody thought he was gonna show up looking the way he looked this year. A lot of people had him potentially like challenging Nick Walker, being the talk of the show after the show. People kind of thought that he would do what Martin just did. However, something went wrong along the way. I'm not sure what, I'm not sure when, but things obviously didn't go as planned because at this year's New York Pro, he placed sixth. And I don't want to be too harsh, because I know Quinton is disappointed big time right now, but honestly, I felt like even this sixth spot here was kind of a gift. Yeah, his structure is beautiful, but he was even smaller than two years ago, and the other guys, like Tim, like Angel, are freaking mass monsters. So I don't know how he got that sixth, well, I guess based on his structure, but yeah, it wasn't a very good look, it definitely wasn't his best. His conditioning, for sure, was better than ever before, this is the condition that he needs to keep bringing, the 2022 conditioning was not good enough, it was okay against somebody like Akeem Williams, who was also not in shape, then he is now coming super shredded, as he did at the Arnold Classic, and at the Arnold Classic UK, and he is going to bring it, I'm sure, just as well for the Toronto Pro, so I know Quinton is planning on doing that show, can he beat Akeem Williams? I don't think so, I don't think there's a chance. So what should he do now? We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. As far as his physique, yeah, conditioning was improved, but he lost too much fullness, man, especially in the legs. I think the back was improved, but with his flatness, he just didn't look very good. And I don't know if this is fixable, honestly. I don't think this is a problem with the peak week, yeah, sure, they can try and like bring up the food from now to the next show and hopefully gain some of that fullness back and sacrifice some conditioning, but I think he lost an actual muscle, actual tissue while he was chasing this conditioning, so can you really bring back the muscle in a couple of weeks or a month? I don't know, maybe a little bit, but yeah, I think he needs to go back and start again from the scratch with a little bit different approach without sacrificing that much muscle to get in condition. Should he find another coach or go back to Dorian Haywood or continue with Matt Jensen? I guess probably he should stick with Matt because maybe Matt can fix whatever went wrong. Hopefully Matt knows what it is, but really, honestly, I think it's just the fact that he doesn't have enough muscle to afford getting in this kind of condition. Which is exactly, I believe, why Milo Sharchev kept Samson Dauda in that conditioning. Because if they pushed for much, much better conditioning, Samson wouldn't have the fullness and simply the size, the roundness, the shape that his frame requires in order to be competitive against the top guys in order to beat guys like Nick Walker, and to hang with Derek Lansford and Hari Chopin, I mean, if Samson was with the same shape, with the same size, same roundness and all that fullness, 
and with great conditioning, we all know he will win the Mr. Olympia, but that's not possible. Not right now. Maybe at this point it is, but not two years ago, when Milos prepped him when he got top six in the Mr. Olympia and so on. So I think the mistake is there, you know, Matt was pushing him to get in condition like Nick Walker, for example, but he can't afford that, not just yet. The new muscle that he gained in the offseason just couldn't stick, you know, as he was pushing for conditioning, he was losing everything, the new muscle he gained and body fat. So in the end, he ended up looking uh, slight, you know, he definitely ended up looking flat and... Uh, he lost a lot of that fullness, like, if you compare him to the 2022 version, you can obviously see that he was smaller back then. I mean, now his arms are bigger, biceps and triceps, his lats also, I mean, terrace muscle, whatever, he's just wider in the back, and his legs, now he has the details in the inner part, the rectus femoris, like the center of the quad, but look at how much fullness he lost in the adductors. So he definitely lost too much fullness because he was chasing this conditioning. Uh, if he was like out of three things, structure, mass and conditioning, I do have the structure, probably one of the best structures in the world right now, maybe the best, like super small waist, super small joints, beautiful shape, great aesthetics, great proportions and so on. What else can I have? Conditioning and size both? No, no, that's not gonna happen. One off-season is definitely not enough. Even though it's a longer off-season, it's not enough. You can't get to the level of muscularity that, I don't know, Nick Walker has, or even Martin Fitzwater, these shorter guys. It's just not gonna happen, not in one longer, whatever, off-season. No, no. His frame is too big, it's a huge frame to fill it out. It's gonna take, like, five years, at least, at least of really pushing it to get to that level of muscularity. So what he should have done, or the way he should have taught, or the way Matt Jansen should have taught was, I have the structure and I'm gonna have the size as well, because I'm a tall guy, I'm gonna be as big as possible with decent conditioning, because honestly, from what I saw in open bodybuilding in the IBB Pro League, and from what I heard, not directly from the judges, but from the people who talk to the judges, the fullness, the size, are valued more than conditioning, usually. If you have to choose one thing, better have the size if you're an open bodybuilder. I mean, just look at Samson Dauda, how far he came, how many shows he won, how highly he placed at the Olympia or at the Arnold Classic without having a single line in his glutes. The same thing is with Andrew Jacked. These guys are big, they have huge frames and great lines, great structure, great symmetry and so on. They only need to be full and round and conditioned, you know, just enough. Just enough to get away with it. And that's the best thing for them, when they reach, I don't know, 400 pounds in the offseason, maybe they can get in Nick Walker's kind of condition, or Harry Japan's conditioning, but right now, for Quinton Araya, he can't get in that conditioning without losing too much fullness, that much that it's gonna hurt his look. Once again, at a Tampa Pro two years ago, he was significantly smaller. He gained muscle in the meantime, but he just looked better with this full look right here. Because he didn't lose any muscle during the prep, he didn't go for crazy conditioning. His conditioning was okay, it was decent, you can't say this is a horrible conditioning. Yeah, sure, it was better at the New York Pro, but I think this conditioning is good enough. I think this is exactly the way he should have stepped on that stage without losing any of the muscle, and he would look phenomenal. Maybe he would actually place, I don't know, top 2, top 3, I could see it but not the way he looked at the New York Pro, he lost all the fullness and, you know, it is what it is, now what he can do is he can try to, you know, bring his body back to life, maybe when he ups the food, maybe he regains some of that fullness, but definitely not enough. And I'm not saying he lost that muscle forever, muscle memory is a crazy thing, once he starts his offseason, he's gonna regain his old size back quickly, and then he can progress even more. The only thing is the approach to the prep that he can change for the next time he competes, and I believe that's the only thing he can do. And I'm talking from experience. You guys know that I'm nowhere near this professional level, and yeah, of course, Matt Jensen is one of the best coaches in the world, but in my case, this is what I did. In my category, I was like at the weight limit, so I always went for maximum conditioning. I would lose some size and fullness, but I would come in as dry as possible, and it would work well for me because the other guys in my category weren't bigger than me. They were actually probably smaller. 
The same thing, for example, Dorian Yates did back in the 90s, because on that Mr. Olympia stage back then, he was the biggest guy, even if he lost some muscle, he would still be the biggest, so he could afford doing that. And for example, this client of mine, we could have went with better conditioning. From the front, he was okay, but from behind, he could have been even drier. But I didn't want to go to that extent because he would lose the fullness, especially from the front and against the other guys who are much bigger, he would lose because the size also matters, even in classic physique. So sometimes you need to think about what works best for you depending on who you're going against. So I believe Milos Sajic had a really good strategy with Samson, and that's why Samson did so well. Matt Jensen, even though I still believe he is one of the best coaches in the world, I believe he made a mistake here. I would like to hear what his explanation is. If he explains it, I will make a video about it, but as for right now, that's my opinion. And as for what Quinton is gonna do next, will he switch to classic physique? <laughs> Somebody asked this question, and they said, bro, if you truly spent the last two years trying to put on muscle... I think he would do much better in classic, just trying to be truthful. And he replies, over dieted man, lost tissue during a hard cut, this can be rectified, uh, F classic, <laughs> lol, I'd rather retire. So, Quinton has no plans of ever doing the classic physique, I believe he was like, I don't know, 25 pounds, I believe, above the weight cap. So could he make it? Not without sacrificing a lot more muscle. So it doesn't make sense for him. And as far as his structure and shape, it's not that good. I mean, let's be real. It's not Chris Bumstead kind of structure. Although I am getting flex filler type of vibes in the front double bicep, don't you think so? And also Tony Freeman in the front lat spread. And we've seen this before, open bodybuilders going back to classic physique. When they have been in open bodybuilding for a while and really tried to push the weight, it doesn't work well. Some guys who were always smaller, they can do it successfully. I don't think it would work with Quinton. He would look just way too stringy. He would lose the weed taper. He wouldn't look as good. Right now, he is very aesthetic for sure, but... No, no, he wouldn't do well in classic physique, he wouldn't be like a top guy, no. So, open is definitely the division for him, uh, somebody also commented, bro, go for another offseason and put on some mass, your frame is too huge for real. And he says, I'm not just gonna go and give up on this year because of a bad result in one show, going to try and correct this mistake and go from there. Which is exactly what he should do, he can't just throw away the entire prep, he can try at least come in fuller, maybe it's gonna work in his favor, maybe he's gonna qualify for a Mr. Olympia, but yeah, for some real results, for being one of the top guys actually, he's gonna need to put on more muscle and approach the prep differently. That's just my opinion, guys, if you disagree, you can tell me down below, whatever your thoughts are, thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to this channel, guys, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best and bye-bye.